The lying and the spinning continued on Wednesday when Secretary of State Hillary Clinton took to the chair to testify in the Benghazi hearings. The U.S. Senate is trying to get to the bottom of the terrorist attack against the consulate in Benghazi, Libya, the one that left the ambassador and three other Americans dead. The picture fuzzy following the attack. Obama and his team of spinners, including Clinton and U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice, set out to complicate the issue. For weeks, we heard different stories. First, they, they blamed the attack on that stupid video that was offensive to Muslims. Obama and Clinton went so far as to make the a, a video apologizing and appealing for people to not overreact. And then we found out that al-Qaeda was responsible and that the United States government knew this almost immediately. In fact, Ambassador Stevens and others in Benghazi had requested extra security, beefed up security, and they voiced suspicions of a looming attack. They knew this was coming. These requests, of course, were ignored. Then revisionist history was applied. When Obama and his team pretended he had called Benghazi an act of terror on September 12th in the Rose Garden speech. Well, the confusion and spin continues with Clinton's testimony. Let's take a look here at what she said. It's time for some Canadian common sense. Hillary Clinton, very talented individual, gave a spirited address to the Senate committee. She was animated, at times emotional, got choked up over the lost lives and sacrifice, lost her temper when asked about the alleged protest outside the consulate. Yes, Clinton put on a performance. Some call those distractions to deflect from the truth. Listen to how Hillary Clinton responds when asked if she was responsible for the attack when her department ignored requests for extra security. You know, I do feel responsible. I feel responsible for uh, the nearly 70,000 people who work for the State Department. I take it very seriously. Um, the, the specific security requests um, pertaining to Benghazi, you know, were handled by the security professionals in the department. I didn't see those requests. Uh, they didn't come to me. I didn't approve them. I didn't deny them. So she feels responsible generally for her entire department of over 70 thousand bureaucrats. When it comes to specifics, Clinton distances herself from any of the decision-making on security in Benghazi. And she does not give any specifics about who may be responsible. But the committee wouldn't let Clinton get away that easily. This was a very politically charged issue during the presidential campaign. Obama and his team had just finished celebrating their victory over al-Qaeda at the Democratic National Convention a few weeks earlier. The Democrats wanted to run on a campaign that focused on killing Osama bin Laden but withdrawing from unpopular wars. An al-Qaeda attack in Libya could threaten that entire narrative. So they just avoided it. They confused the issue enough for it to become obscure and not a ballot box issue. Idaho Republican Senator Jim Risch reminded Clinton of this yesterday and asked her why she herself called this an armed attack and not terrorism. Take a look. We all realize this happened at a politically charged time uh, uh, here in the country as we approached an election. Notwithstanding that, the American people are still entitled to be told the truth about these. Did you select Ambassador Rice to deliver the message to the American people? No, I, I did not, Senator. And you're right. It was a terrorist attack. I called it an attack by heavily armed militants. Well and, done. And, you know, that is uh, clearly uh, what happened. I personally was not focused on talking points. I was focused on keeping our people safe. Notice how Clinton tosses Ambassador Talking Points Rice right under the bus. Of course, we know that Rice's talking points were pure spin and completely misleading. Rice said over and over again that the attack was caused by protests over this video. And when Clinton was really pressed about this lie, she really loses her temper. Take a look. Again, we no. were misled that there were supposedly protests and then something sprang out of that, an assault sprang out of that. And that was easily but ascertained I, that that was not the fact. But, but, and the American know, people could have known that within days, and, and they, they didn't know that. With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? makes a huge difference whether you're telling the truth or not telling the truth about the murder of an ambassador. Of course, it does matter. Now, what sparked the attacks? And it did matter during the election. It mattered a lot. Americans need to know what their diplomats and troops overseas are really up against. Clinton's passionate response, again, deflects from any guilt for herself or the administration. 
or for the president. She reiterates that she takes responsibility for the State Department's security failure, yet she distances herself from the decisions that led to those failures. So welcome, folks, to the world of political spin and manipulation and BS. And Hillary Clinton is a veteran, a pro. In one of her last appearances as America's top diplomat, Hillary Clinton provided a spirited appearance that can best be described as an emotional roller coaster. That's what the headlines read. Hey, that's not a bad headline for Clinton. Better to be called spirited and passionate than to be called a liar. Clinton knows how to play the game. I give her credit for that. But when it comes to the lives of any Americans, especially the diplomats and the Foreign Service under her watch, it should not be a game. Americans deserve much better than a circus. And that's Canadian common sense.